Remember your mercy is the Lord. And with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants. For whom Christ your son, by the shedding of his blood, established the past and mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. I visit him. First time.
Whom are you looking for? The master. Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, he stripped away and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, Who are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let this man go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those who knew their name. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword through it, struck the high priest's name and cut off his mind here. The slave's name was Marcus. Jesus said to Peter, Who your sword back into the sea? Am I not to bring the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officers, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Anna, who was the father-in-law of Jesus, the high priest that year. Jesus was the one who had addressed the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that present was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus in the courtyard of the high priest, but Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to the woman who guarded the gate and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? Peter said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold. And they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then high priest pushed Jesus above his disciples and above his teachings. I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When we are said this, one of the police chanting me a that Jesus One of the priests saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the Lord. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Allah said to him, On him was the high priest. Now Simon Peter was chanting and warning himself, saying, Ask him. You are not also one of his disciples, are you? I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and at the moment the cook brought. Then they took Jesus from where was the fire that for days. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the dead forties, so as to avoid the church environment and to be able to eat the Passover. Then Pilate went out to the man said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, he would have we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and judge him according to your law. They replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus Christ said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? We asked this other court called. How others told about him. 
I am not the Jew. Am I? The one nation and the key priest have handed over to me. What I have done? My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. So you are the king. You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone belongs to the truth, listens to my voice. What is the truth? Do not write the 
king of the Jews. But this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, I have written, I have written. Thank you. 
death is inevitable. No one can prophesize his death or predict how he is going to die. Only those people who have a high sense of telepathy, who are one to God, the Almighty, but no egoism, no individualism, are selfless to the cause of humanity, have the sense of telepathy. And Jesus is said to have a high sense of telepathy because he foresee what was going to happen. He prophesies beforehand what was going to come. And also even his death. And many a times he did so, but his apostle, the disciple, did not understand what he meant. And most of the great leaders in the world he see and met with a violent death. He see first president of America, Abraham Lincoln. He had a political struggle, a civil war, and ended slavery. Great opportunity for civil and social freedom of Afro-Americans. He was a good and morally virtuous person. He saw equality in rights and equality of opportunities he was shot dead by the sympathizer of the Federation and actor on 14th April 1965. Another, a black American, Martin Luther King Jr., a Baptist minister who worked for the civil rights of the black. And he was became famous for his famous speech that he gave on the memorial of Abraham Lincoln. I have a dream. And he worked for the end of racism and still racism goes on still evident in these countries. He too first had an escape for the attempt made on his life but in the second that was on 4th April 1968 he was shot dead. But then we have our own Mahatma Gandhi. He too had an encounter with racism in South Africa when he went. He was thrown out from the trade, but there he made his own turn back. He realized what it was, and then he also came to his own country, which was enslaved. He invited non violence the complete principle of the Bible, the gospel of Jesus. He loved Christ and he followed Christ materialistically. For the God is true. And he stood for the values and virtues of Jesus. And he too was shot dead by the right wing at a broad point blank range. The beauty we see that the momentum that they led gained more momentum after their death. Not before their death by passing the laws, but after their death it became more evident for things that they have seen and people working towards it. People gave the cause to what they died for. Even today, people stand for what they did. And similarly, we see Jesus. A Jesus said, a more violent death, a cruel thing can I see, atrocities, humility in his death. 
I pray as we keep the good flight. Why it is good? Because Jesus crucifixion and his death on the cross. On the cross he saved the humanity and the world. Which was considered as a tragedy in the cause of justice became an effective and efficacious means of restoring justice in the world. We cannot dismiss the atrocities, the cruelty and humility we undergo for the way of the cross dedicated passion. Very important, we see the love of God. A few days ago, we are in the Lenten season, and there was in the WhatsApp and a video recording which showed ground zero the atrocities that were commented in Kanbal, Odisha on the Christians. And it was written. Those who desecrated the altar, one died of paralysis, another committed suicide, another who desecrated the tabernacle by urinating, died of urine blockade, another who died by hitting a tree, then who has silence of the priest also died untimely. Some became the protectors of the church who tried to banish Christ for a Hindu, a Christian period. Most important is what we focus here is the God of punishment not the God of love that Jesus portrays to us. God is not the God of punishment. If you do this, this will happen to you. No. These are wrong. Sometimes we see uh, this thing happen, this, this thing happen and we connect to it. But God who loves, who forgives, that is more important. And that's what Jesus brings to us. And that was we see in a prodigal son. And it shows an example a son who lavishly spent all his belonging that was his and came back to the father. Except me, even as a son and not as a son. But before he could say this thing, the father looking at him, going and embracing him with love and affection, throwing a peace for him. A God who is merciful, who is forgiving, who is compassionate. And from the cross, we see you. A second, that is the, the teeth on the right hand side. And Jesus said to him, Was apart. Today you shall be with me in paradise. And the third, Father, forgive them when you do not know what they do. And these are the words of Jesus. Do we refer to God of punishment or the God of love? And that is very important in our day to day life. Jesus, we see. Very important is his passion. In passion, he revealed the love of God in the suffering people. He is the face of compassion and understanding of God. He is the face of mercy and forgiveness of God. Because he is involved in human suffering. 
their trials, their difficulties, and all their walks of life he underwent. He was the God who took the form of human, and he lived as human and went through all the problems of him. And you see, if he want, he could have done great miracles as he performed. We see in the Ten Commandments, Moses performed a lot of miracles to free the Israelites from the slavery of the Egyptians. And he got it done, even dividing the sea. Jesus who have today the suffering, the atrocities, humility, but to show that God is love. And the cross, which was the same full death, you know, according, it is done. It is too much of a cruelty, the atrocities on the person. And that was the Roman punishment. They did go to the history. And one of the doctors explaining the death of Jesus to scientific proofs. And he said he was nailed not in his palm, but in the thing. He was purged with those there were metal pieces, gold pieces, leather pieces attached to the Roman scourging. The whips that were made. And they would break back completely your tendons, your muscles, your tendons on your thighs, and your, everything on your, behind your back with the thing. Little person will have no strength to carry you anything. The scourging was so hard that I can see the passion of us, nothing new, but that is what they did according to the history. A third, second, he said, the crown of thorns was almost one and a half to two inches long, the thorn. You pierced to the skull of Jesus. So, accordingly, Jesus died on the cross to the loss of blood. And even if the person was alive, the third thing was the spear that pierced through his heart, his side. And that was sure death. Even if the person is alive, the spear that was pierced to the side, to the heart, made the person sure death. And then he did his thing difficult. The cruelty that was, he went to humility that he went. And the fourth thing, the Romans who had the person for crime were nude, completely naked. Not even a loin cloth around the waist that we see. It was a most shameful death that he underwent. That is, this he shows. And for us, for what? He was innocent, but yet he was condemned to death, die for our own sins. God showing his loving for son, turning his face also on his son. But yet God had something, and that was the cross. The cross became his seat, his throne, where he gave his life as a ransom for men. As he said, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for men. We are in this world. We are caught in with two things. To follow Jesus or to worship Jesus. Follow Jesus is we are to pay back. We have a lot of things to go ahead. We see the atrocities committed. We see the injustice that some have to undergo, the poverty, the marginalized, to abandon on the streets. Then 40 percent of our population in India is below the poverty line. People die of hunger, of thirst, of clothes, shelter. And that's what's very important to reach out to his people. And that's what Jesus said. You want to follow me? Pick up your daily cross and follow me. If you want to follow me, 
Give everything to the poor and come follow me. Jesus is not telling worship me. Jesus is saying follow me. In the Bible, we come across in the gospel, it is follow. Come follow me. Even the apostles, we gave a call to land you and other things, follow me, not worship me. And so we are now turned more of followers than worshippers of Jesus. We are forget the true sense of the cross, the good Friday that Jesus gave himself for us, for humanity and for this world. Very important in our day to day life. To look into ourselves, and that is important. Are we the followers or the worshippers of Christ? That question remains for us to ponder and to reflect and to meditate on. Let us pray, dear beloved, for the Holy Church of God. Our God and Lord, be pleased to give a peace, to God, to unite her, to help the whole world, and grant that we live our life in tranquility and quiet. We pray and glorify God, the Father. Let us Let us stand. Almighty the living God, who in Christ revealed your glory all the nations, watch for the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. For the Pope. Let us pray also for the Holy Father, Pope Francis, that our Lord and Lord, who chose
the constant mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life. May we made it more perfect witnesses to your love in this world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those who do not believe in God, let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right with sincerity of heart, they may find a way to God Himself. Let us kneel.
for the blessed death and resurrection of your son. First you have acknowledged the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have life unceasingly devoted to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, tomorrow's service will begin at night 9 p.m. At Sunday morning, we have the Holy Priest at 9 a.m. Please bow your heads and pray to God's blessing. With the abundant blessing of Lord, we pray, descend upon your people. We have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen.